is why I'm a demanding man. Bring those who oppose me and slay them before me. The gospel of the Lord. Wow. It's a very powerful image here. Uh, and I don't think Jesus is trying to paint God in uh, negative or, or difficult terms. What I think Jesus is trying to do is to, to invite people to recognize that it's not up to us to tell God when it's time for him to act. Um, there's a sense that we want to be in control of things. We want to know when things are going to happen. Oh, let me know when that deadline is so that I know when I'm going to work on stuff. Well, work on it now. Um, some of us are in positions where we're working with people that are working on projects. And it's like, well, let's all work on it now. <laughs> Why wait until there's a deadline? But sometimes we do that. And others have this great fear of those in charge. And so instead of looking at how they can share those talents, they keep them hidden. I was afraid of you. You were uh, a demanding man. You take up what you do not lay down. You harvest what you did not plant. And so I, I hid away what you gave me. I think there are too many Christians and certainly too many Catholics who hide away what God has given to them. That their faith is a personal possession that they're not meant to be used for the Lord. In this parable, Jesus gives these servants who are given this particular element of financial wealth. But they were not given to them to say, well, this is nice, here you go. They were given it to them because the master trusted them to engage that wealth to make some kind of return so that they could be offered back to the Lord so that while this guy is off doing whatever he needs to do, he comes back that they have some return. And two out of the three servants did that. When God gives to us certain gifts and talents, it's not just saying like, oh, Alicia, I like you, so I'm going to let you do this, blah. Or Eileen, I think I'm going to make you like this. Mm. He gives us gifts and talents to be used, to, to, be, to be fruitful, to, to, to produce some sort of fruit in the world today. The whole thing about being a one holy Catholic and apostolic church, to be apostolic means we got to go out there. And I know sometimes we've got to go say, oh, well, let's go and plant seeds. No, not just plant seeds, harvest too. What does Jesus say? The harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. We're not just about planting seeds and we hope one day it's all going to come out okay. No, we're looking for the right grain. We need, we're supposed to go out there and help God harvest that. And a lot of people say, wow, it's such a hard thing that Jesus says to the one who has, more will be given. One who has not, what little they have will be taken away. That's kind of sad. Is Jesus being really mean to poor people? No. What he is being is he's calling people who don't put their faith in their practice, saying that faith grows by putting it into our life. I think sometimes we, we say, God, increase my faith as if it's something you get at Costco. You know, it's like a thing that we have. If I have faith, I can do this thing. Faith is that relationship. You want to increase your faith? Work on that relationship between you and God. You know, our, our theme for Congress this coming year is embrace trust. And trust is not just some concept. It's embracing the fact that God leads us and cares for us. And we've got to embrace that. We've got to embrace the trust that God will take care of it. And if he asks us to get out there, he's going to be with us. And is it going to be challenging? You betcha. I sound like the Midwest now. <laughs> But what's the alternative? The alternative is that our faith dies on the vine, not being used, not being engaged. And we're more afraid of an image of God than really being afraid of God himself. And the, the image we have from our first reading, it tells us, it helps give us an idea of how we ought to orient our lives. These 24 elders seated near the throne all have crowns, which means that they were faithful. They did the task that was given to them. They proved themselves faithful to the call, and they responded to that call. And now that they've passed from this world to the next, God has seated them in thrones around his own. But even though they have 
gained heaven, as I guess you could say. They have their crowns. As soon as praise begins to God, all those finery things, they're all thrown down. They're all cast away because their lives were not about getting crowns. Their lives were about praising God. And in the New Roman Missal, one of my favorite changes was a dismissal. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. That's what those 24 are doing, even in heaven. Glorifying God with their lives. And it is that will to glorify God with our lives, that's where the crown comes. So, brothers and sisters, we have a pretty pretty clear instance here of asking of us are we going to glorify God with our lives to put our faith into practice to build that relationship with God and to move forward answering that call following the example of the apostles and so many great witnesses including St. Gertrude the great and to continue to praise God with all that we do and say to take whatever he gives us and to use it for his greater glory.